Today we're going to watch True Life, I'm a Pro Wrestler, a 1999 documentary presentation that aired on MTV. I've seen clips of this in the past, but never watched it from start to end. We have a one hour runtime here, so let's get started. The popularity of pro wrestling is the pop culture surprise story of the late 90s. <laughs> And with 35 million people watching them on TV each week, wrestlers are now some of the most famous people in the world. But who are they really? I mean, I don't think people realize what it is that we actually do. On this edition of True Life, we'll find out. We'll go behind the scenes with the first couple of the WWF, Triple H, and China. Uh, first couple of the WWF? I don't think so. We'll experience life after the glamour is gone, as former champion Tony Atlas works the small towns struggling to survive. And though their fighting may be staged, One, two, three. <laughs> we'll take you to wrestling school where the pain is definitely real. We'll go inside their battered heads next on True Life, I Am a Pro Wrestler. <laughs> he almost missed that diving headbutt there. Close call. So along with ESPN, E Plus Entertainment and other media outlets, MTV were getting in on the late 90s pro wrestling craze. MTV had a good relationship with WWF in the past, but they also worked with WCW around this time period. See my WCW blunder video looking at Snow Brawl and Beach Brawl. What do I love about it? The response from the crowd. The money. The women. <laughs> The sheer violence, mainly. Oh, the guys. It's just great. I mean, they're the most creative, exciting people to be in the world. The people. Hey, there he is. Even if I'm, you know, feeling exhausted or I'm just not into it, by the time I hit the curtain, the people just uh, totally, I just like suck all their energy and I'm just like, woo. <laughs> I love attention. Maybe a little love for pain. It's almost exhilarating to do it. it it's fun. I just like to get in and fight and kill and maim and destroy. See my blood. Mate, your blood's all over your face. I just love it. It's here in the Rupp Arena. I guarantee you, China. For me, there's no better feeling in the world. This place is completely sold out. And every son of a bitch in here was on his feet and never sat down once. That's what it's about for us, for the two of us, is to go out there and do that to these people. That, that's the shot for us. Oh, don't do that, Hunter. You don't want to give the wrong idea, know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? That's what we got to have. Tony Atlas, Mr. USA. When I watch it, I get depressed. Thinking about, you know, what I had. Let go of them trunks, Hogan. You growing up. You growing up. You on top of the head now. Well, there you go. Boom. That's a bit sad, isn't it? Being depressed about your previous success instead of being happy with what you accomplished. By the way, have you ever checked out Tony Atlas's Twitter? The guy has some interesting preferences, let's just say. So Matt's a 24 year old bum who's finally leaving mommy and daddy in order to attend wrestling school. Living the dream my boy, living the dream. Mm, I always love wrestling. I love how they, the characters, all of them, the bad guys, the good guys. So to me, if I did anything else, I would be unhappy. And I've tried so many stupid little things. I've tried to get a psych degree, like for psychology. Getting a psychology degree isn't stupid, mate. I tried to get a business degree for business. Getting a business degree isn't stupid, mate. Um, I've tried to sign up to go to Fireman Academy. Becoming a fireman isn't stupid, mate. Uh, police Academy. All right, you may have a point there. I mean, I've actually done crazy sh I, I would take my dad's MasterCard and say, come on, give me your MasterCard, I want to go sign up for school. I would Oh, thank God the video cut out here because I was just starting to get annoyed with this spoiled little prick. Party, which uh, I've done that like six or seven times. Now, hopefully, I will be a professional wrestler as long as I don't get hurt. And I think I'll be the best. He just said, hopefully, he'll be a pro wrestler as long as he doesn't get hurt. Matt, uh, let's call him Matt Classic, actually. 
Matt Classic, you're in for a very big surprise, my man. And in fact, I am going to be the best professional wrestler. He sounded a bit like Eric Cartman. Got it. <laughs> all these years, I kept the training up. Okay. But it was all that I had left. All my money gone, fame gone, everything gone. The only thing I've got left is my strength and style. So I try to hold on to that little bit from the past, you know? I was thinking about, like, my first match, because I would be like... Coming out and had them eyes, like the crazy eyes. Depends, I don't know what character I'm gonna use, but them eyes always, I mean, if you watch the greats, the greats always get the eyes going, like Hogan. Hogan, when he gets mad, he'll go, you know, go. So, for me, I like the, I'll get like the stone jaw, and then I'll get the eyes. I think you actually have to have a jaw for that, mate. You look like a predator. Stop doing that. There's thousands of cameras everywhere. There's thousands of fans everywhere. I mean, this is the big show. I mean, when, when you're here, it's... it's... <laughs> Couldn't tell if that was Triple H or WCW Chris Jericho there for a moment. It's the big time, and everything about it is big time. When you're a big star, you work a lot more. Ah, hold up. When you're a big star, you work more? That doesn't work for me, brother. Or acknowledge your tribal chief, China. Whatever works. When you're a big star, you're in the main events. When you're a bigger star, you're treated differently. It sets you apart. Now, don't drive like a crazy person either, like you normally do. I want to be the man. Uh, I want everybody to know who I am. The glamour and the glitz to be able to get off a plane and somebody know who you are. That's what I want. I want to be known. Everybody wishes that they had a job that they'd love to wake up to in the morning. And I do. I love waking up to my job. I love what I do. I love being a celebrity. Oh, what happened to Steve? Big floppy Steve Austin. My goal at this point is to be the WWF champion. And uh, that means that you're the best in this business. It means that you're the, you're the man. Um, it means you're top dog. That's uh, got me some poke shots, man. All I had to have for on the day of the show is just one meal. Uh, Joe, Joe. To Joe? Uh, Even though I'm not a big star in professional wrestling no more, I still love when the people are cheering and the holler USA, USA, USA. That really makes me feel good. <laughs> you know, at the beginning, you could kind of lock up with me, give me a hip toss. You mean to tell me the wrestlers discuss what's going to happen beforehand? No, I don't believe it. Take a bump, you get right up. You give you another hip toss. Come back, I give you the slam. <laughs> Shoot that clothesline. If you're going to shoot it, shoot it. Ah, uh, it's Les Thatcher. I've been described as a drill sergeant, as a taskmaster, as, uh, you know, and I, I guess that's true. A lot of these kids have a problem with being able to eat properly or to train properly. Matt Classic doesn't have a hope in hell, does he? I do hope he proves me wrong, but all signs point to this guy topping out. He should have got the business degree, my guy. You have to live it. You have to eat it, breathe it, sleep it. That has to be it's the overwhelming, consuming thing in your life. But I'm not going to look at it like it's going to be no junk food. It's, I'm going to look at it like, as right now, I'm going to cut back on my junk food. Of like, I'm not going to eat no candy bars, or maybe one or two. A couple Swedish fish. I can't I can't stop eating Swedish fish. But if he wants me to, I will. I mean, that's what I have to do. That's the price of fame and fortune and millions and millions of fans. Who do you want this to? Uh, to Bradley and Jessica. And I don't think people realize.
realize what it is that we actually do. The part that we're in the ring is not really where the work is. The work is traveling 250 days out of the year, trying to keep your body in shape, you know, trying to deal with life outside the ring. It's a lot of work. We do this all the time, and it's something we do 24-7. It's not just your work anymore. Some absolutely banging music. I love it. Go to Toronto, work Sky Dome, back to Buffalo, good night's rest, have the pay-per-view in Buffalo. Right. Pay-per-view in Buffalo, 1999, that would be fully loaded. Triple H versus The Rock, Steve Austin versus The Undertaker. And from there we go to Cleveland. This is Triple H from the World Wrestling Federation. All right, Matt, take your t-shirt off. Ooh, we're going to be <laughs> trouble here. Right. Well, you could be worse. 20.9% body fat. Is that bad? That's bad. The 20.9%. The average male should be around 15. <laughs> That's a bit harsh, isn't it? <laughs> Means you're carrying 40.54 pounds of body fat. All of our characters are a little bit of ourselves. China is a powerful, strong woman. She's attractive and she holds her own in a male dominated environment. I want people to look at me and think that I'm beautiful and that I have a nice body and that I'm nice to look at, but I never wanted that to be my sole purpose. I think that women as a whole could do so much better than that. And it really annoys me when that's the only worth that's given to them. Work with me. I'm gonna start you off the rope. The main thing we're gonna teach you is how to break your fall without breaking your neck, we hope. When you come back, like again, it's like a breaststroke. Fall. Fall on your shoulders. Fall. Tuck your chin. Okay. Your hands are hitting first. Yeah, you're, yeah. So try again. Sit. I'm not going to say anything here because even though my classic's a bit of a tool, I'm sure wrestling school's absolutely no joke. Remember, the cameras are rolling here, so this is Thatcher's school being shown in the absolute best light possible. I've nothing but respect for inexperienced guys and girls who want to learn this because it can't be easy. Matt Classic's still a prick though. You know, just like the ring, people think, oh, it's so springy and bouncy, it's so much fun. But let me assure you, when you get slammed on it, you get dumped on it, you get dropped on it, it hurts and hurts and it keeps hurting. It doesn't, you don't get used to it. You never get used to it. <laughs> What's going on here? Beautiful. You go out and you do it, and then you come back in the locker room, and it's like, ah, damn, that was great. Okay. Beautiful. Sometimes you come back and you go, ah, damn, that was great. Five minutes after your adrenaline shuts down, you can't stand up. Beautiful. 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 Yes! <laughs> God damn. Beautiful, baby. Every single night, it's a different city, and every single night, every ass in those seats expects they want the absolute best. They couldn't give a crap less what you were the night before or what you did at the pay-per-view. It doesn't matter. You gotta be on, you gotta be ready, and you gotta be on. It's a lot of preparation, and I think a lot of it is just mental preparation. And here comes China, Triple H. It's the accentuation. I mean, I could stand here and punch you and nobody looks right but if i lean my body all the way back and roll my body through it then the punch looks that more devastating it's all in my body language or my facial expressions that i'm cranking on and China interrupted the count there not again Taylor again that should be all right there this place is electrified the ropes are an education all in themselves Yes, the ropes can bite you. Mark Classic attacks the ropes better than David Flair. Let it be known. One, two, yes, it's over. You smell what the rock is doing. I'm a monster here. I might even treat the blood from the cut. 
my ass is like on fire. We just finished our first day of actual professional wrestling school, and um, I'll tell you, my ass is like on fire. I'm in some real pain. Oh, oh my God. And for all you people who don't believe that it's real, let me tell you something. It's real, all right. I'll show you the bruises later. I don't want to see your ass bruises, man. Thank you, but I don't want to see them. I've ever been in, in my life, and I've been in a few. That was like so intense. It was fun. Oh, it was great, man. I had the best time of my life. I was doing what I love to do. I'm wearing a Speedo for my nuts because my nuts, I'll tell you right now, my nuts hurt more than anything else in the world. Bam! That's how it feels when you go over and like one of them snap suplexes or something and your nuts hit your leg and it's, it's very painful. Do I look out of shape? I don't think I'm out of shape, personally. Look at that. I got some shoulders and everything. 20.9% body fat, mate. In three years, we spent more time together than... Hey, hey, pick that shit up. Stop littering, Triple H, you big stupid litter bug. Most people that are married, we wake up, we go eat, we go work out, we go to the building, we do our show. Everywhere we go, we're together. We don't get a chance to go to very romantic dinners or go on a vacation. We're together, but we're together in the business. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> Taker's tongue. China likes what she sees. Welcome to Atlas Kitchen. What we have here is a nice big old plate of meat that we're going to barbecue up. Mmm, that smells good. One thing about being at the top all the time, you get uh, too much too soon. I felt that I was uh, invincible. I figured I could do what I want to do and um, get away with it. I was taking, uh, uh, at that time, what they called Diana balls, the steroids, and, you know, and, and that messed me up. And then I smoked some weed before and other stuff, and none of it agreed with me. Each time I did something, it messed me up, and it caused me to miss a show. So this happened several times in my career. How stoned do you have to be to miss a whole show? Like, how stoned do you have to be? In the meanwhile, you got bills coming in, you got uh, expenses to take care of, you got a family to worry about, you know, and, and, you, you know, and, and your life is just falling apart. But I should have known better. I mean, I was grown, you know, I wasn't a kid. I was told, Leave the steroids alone, and you'll be all right. Well, I didn't listen. I said, I'm grown. I'm 280 pounds. I could bench press 600 pounds, and I could whoop your butt, and I do what I want to do. That was the old Tony Atlas. Come on, I want to go, honey. I really do. Okay. Because you know I'm not good at goodbyes. No, no, <laughs> come on. Now, you'll be all right. Mrs. Classic, or Mommy Classic. Why is this dude getting dropped off to wrestling school by his mom? Isn't that like setting yourself up to get ribbed? We are fine. I think I think it's great that she left finally. And I feel like I'm an adult. <laughs> so I'm happy she's gone. Well, I'm not happy that she's gone, but I am happy that she's gone and, and it, it's time for me to do my own thing. Three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three. Please don't fart. Please don't fart. <laughs> Please don't fart. One, two, three.
I got tired in about two minutes. Then I figured I was in the best shape of my life. And then I get in the ring with guys that eat bologna and cheese and drink beer and fuck all day long. And they was beating the hell out of me out there. I got hit over the head with a chair and it, and it knocked me out cold. You're just a total wreck all day. First time I wrestled, I had two matches in one night in front of about uh, 15 people for probably less money than that. And uh, lost both of them. But First time I was in the ring, I was like, oh my God, you know, it's like I'm going to be doing what my like, heroes are doing, you know? This is GQ, go get your gear. You're, you're on next. GQ Masters the third from IWA Mid South. Looks like the love child of Stevie Richards and Eddie Guerrero. You know, you're, you're wrestling a girl. I said, okay, no big deal. So I get back there to introduce me to her. I shake her hand. Uh, you know, he says, now this is her first match, GQ. I said, that's cool, that's cool. Uh, I'll just talk it over with, with her in the ring. We'll just do it out there. He says, oh no, she don't understand, brother. She's deaf and she doesn't speak. And I went, oh my God. Oh, it was scary. I mean, it was, you know, there's a couple of hundred people and all eyes are on you. She couldn't, we, she couldn't cooperate. She couldn't hear what I was saying. So I just went out there, beat the holy pepper, picked her up for a slam, just laid on my back and held her on top, man, and said, you're, you're, you're winning tonight because my, my car is going to... That is how it happened, buddy. <laughs> Masters must be talking out his ass here. I, there's no way she could have beat me legitimately, I can tell you that right now. Yeah, so, you know, and, and I just took this reputation, like my first seven or eight matches were all against women. Boom, man, let's go! Ah, no, 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 whoop, 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 Time, them feet are high. People can't believe this little thing, you know. Again, the illusion, accentuate the movement. Okay, here we go. They don't call him Mod Classic for an often. That's it, good. That's it, there you go. Way to go, Matt. Way to go, Matt. Way to go. Here you go. That's it, good man. All right, good. Good. My God, this looks tiring. He was wanting you to stay, Sheila. That's it, there you go. That's the baby. Breathe. Breathe, there you go. Don't hold your breath. Breathe, Matt. Breathe. That's it, now. Come on. Take a deep breath. He's losing it. He's definitely losing it. Kick. Be sure that feet are some. You're almost halfway there. Come on, Matt. Come on. Let's go. You got him. Whoa. You Whoa. There he goes. All right. Come on, Matt. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Let's go. There you go. Come on. That's a boy. That's a boy. Come on. Come on. One more, you got it, baby. There you go. That Italian behind's getting a little heavier. <laughs> All right, good, good first effort, man. Good first effort. Ready? Here we go. You're right. <laughs> My God. Again, fair play. He may be a knobhead, but he's getting it done, brother. Now here is a picture of me that brings back dark days. When this picture was taken, I was the ICW champion. The reason I had that long robe on is because I was ashamed to show my body at that time. They had deteriorated so much for all the abuse that was taken. When I left that arena that night, I fell asleep in the park because I had no place to go. And I was the champion. <laughs> When I was here, they used to have drug houses, crack houses. The house I used to stay at, they don't tore it down. It was so infected, they had to get rid of it. I couldn't believe that I ever stayed in that place. It was like 10 people living in one apartment, and we all slept in one bedroom, all on top of each other. I didn't have a penny to my name. I woke up one morning, and I started thinking, I said, Tony, you was at Madison Square Garden a year ago with 22,000 people screaming your name, USA, USA. The Tony Atlas stuff definitely serves as this documentary's reality check. I said, well, I can't live like this no more. So I pulled out a razor blade and I sliced my wrist. One of the girls that was in the, in the bed with me, she jumped up and went and got the police. They took me to the hospital. And then about a month later, Vince McMahon called me back. Yeah. And that was the turnaround of my life. 
and I went to the WWF. I wrestled in Saba Simba for eight months, and I made enough money to get myself a new star. You know, I'm still struggling trying to make it, but at least Vince gave me a, a star. I like that scar, because that scar reminded me of how stupid a humor could be. Ooh, it's pretty heavy, pretty heavy. My ultimate goal, <laughs> to be rich and famous. <laughs> Get on the cover of TV Guide. <laughs> Make it to one of the big federations, WWF, WCW. Mott Stryker, the other Mott Stryker, he wrestled for Ring of Honor for a few years, not to be confused with the Mott Stryker who commentated for WWE and Lucha Underground. World Wrestling Federation of the World Championship Wrestling. Craig Zellner, Big Z right here, got into mixed martial arts, career four wins and three losses. The big two, either WCW or the WWF. I wanted to be rich and famous ever since I was little and I didn't really care how it happened. Be on top of the world, right? The champion and all that. Aston Augustus Ambrose, Triple A, that's quite the gimmick name you got there, bud. Good luck with that. Being happy doing what you're doing and doing it well and being content with that. Sure. Just like, you know, continue doing good here in the independents right now. And then hopefully maybe, you know, maybe someday, you know, get to one of the big leagues, you know, WWF, WCW, you know, but I know I'll have to work on my physique, whatever. I would like to step back in that WWF ring just one time. Just one time. We get to have the rush, but you're always chasing it, you know. Everybody thinks it's easy. No. I'm a big guy. I bet you I'd be pretty good at that. Pretty athletic. I used to bowl a little or something, you know. I think they can just run in the ring and be a wrestler and it's, it's so much more than that. We just watched all these young cats sharing their dreams of getting to the big leagues and then Triple H emphasizes how difficult it is. Kinda makes you feel like those kids have no chance of making it at all. It's kinda like you need to be Superman to make it in this business. You need to be like me. You need to be Triple H. Oh, Triple H constipation face. China constipation face. Alright, let's get this show on the road. I get the feeling that reality's starting to kick in for old Mark Classic. Nice, you guys. that can train as focused or hard as China does. She's, she's a 200 pound woman and she's all muscles. She's gonna be a lot bigger than your average guy. Oh. I really enjoy lifting weights, but I don't like this. This is torture for me. Never really thought about it like, oh my God, she's bigger than me, or oh my God, she's stronger than me, or I wish she's not. But I never really, uh, it was never really a factor for me. Um, I just saw her as a, as a person and got to know her personality. And to be quite honest, I'm impressed and proud of everything she does. I, I watch her in the gym and see people just, you know, giving her the, oh my God. And I just, I'm proud of her. It makes me laugh. <sighs> yeah, moving on. If you're not wrestling for the WWF, if you're not wrestling for the WCW, then you're what you call a weekend warrior, which means you go and do the independent show. Hey, little kitties, what y'all doing, little kitties? Oh! She sell these down there, too. Yeah, with the cheap stuff. Yeah. Be a lot more cheaper down that way. So the circle match would be uh, okay, good time. I just had you every time in uh, two rows. Hercules against Mercenary, O'Sullivan against Kalua, Dark Angelo against Steve King. Okay, well we can't. That's gonna be it. That's that's no ten, more matches. That's ten I don't matches. care who's here. We can't put any more in. Mm -hmm. Is this a dressing room? Yeah. Somebody else. Hey! 
We saw this kind of thing in the ESPN documentary I recently covered. The people making these documentaries like to show booking meetings and locker room meetings just to emphasize that wrestling's scripted. Even if the footage they gather is pretty boring to watch, they still like to show these things. <laughs> Don't say suck, guys. Just change it up a bit and say something else. Like fuck. My life on the independent circuit. Well, I spend a lot of time in my car. I actually sleep in my car sometimes. You know, and I, I mean, I kind of sleep amongst the bags of Doritos and, you know, empty bottle cans and stuff. There's some stuff you should never admit to on camera, though I do appreciate the honesty. The money is not in. Hey, hey, shark boy. Put through your body. For example, uh, I, I worked on a show last week where I, uh, I was super flexed and uh, sort of messed up my tailbone, and the pay that I got for the match wasn't even enough to cover the trip to the emergency room. There's no retirement. There's no, no benefits whatsoever. The wrestlers, most wrestlers don't even have insurance. Long car rides suck. They'll promise you an amount of money. You'll get probably the half of it, or maybe you'll get nothing. It happens a lot. What about Alice She going to be here tonight? Well, when I walked into the dressing room, I couldn't even see the wall for so many wrestlers. Some of the guys, they hear about the show, and they would just show up just hoping that they would get put on a car. We have 42 wrestlers. I basically told Tony some of these people couldn't be on the show because we didn't have the money to pay them to be on the show. A lot of them guys, they would get 20 bucks, some would get $30, some would get 50 Outside of your main event guys like King Kong Bundy, the highest paid guy on the show get $100. I had two people sitting in the dressing room that I booked myself and I felt that they, I was responsible for them to wrestle that night and to get paid. So it's, I pulled myself out and put them in. Bye. Now he's all mad at me because I paid the boys off. Of course we were angry at Tony at that because it's my money, I am the promoter, and we just have so much money allocated per show, we have to stay within that budget. I don't feel that no man should drive for 10 hours, be away from his family for the whole weekend, and not even get paid for it. You can maybe see both sides of the argument here. Tony feeling he was doing what was right, but he was also doing something he didn't have the authority to do. Train wreck, downshift, Matt, downshift. Can you breathe all right? It'd be five dollars. Everything hurts. I think my ego hurts the most because I thought I'd be like this in here and I, I suck. <laughs> I knew this was going to happen. You can tell from Matt's attitude. On one hand, I do feel sorry for him because it can't be easy. On the other hand, he's a cocky little shit who relies on daddy's credit card. Cry. Go ahead. Cry. TV show every week where one week we're playing a doctor and another week we're playing a secret agent. We are a hunter in China. When we leave the ring, we're still a hunter in China. Physically, we look the same. We can't hide. Can I get another one for her, sir? We're a hunter in China 24 hours a day. People view us as that. Thank, Thank you. you. You're welcome. Yes. So if he's a whole on TV, when we... Uh, go out to eat at one o'clock in the morning, every drunk person in the world still considers him an asshole. And, you know, it's, it, exactly, it makes it very difficult. You cannot separate yourself from your character on TV. Heartland Wrestling, not bad, how about you? 
Wow, what's happened with young Matt from Chicago? Young Matt has been to one training session in 10 days. Oh dear. I'm in the hotel room, which I hate. I can't stand this room. Uh, I'm lonely, I'm bored. I really miss my family and friends. He is not disciplined, he is not structured. Uh, he's pretty much, you might call a loose cannon. Man, I missed one class. I I called in before I missed it, he bitching and bitching and bitching about it. Matt, I think, uh, like a lot of young men, has a high testosterone level. The young ladies are an important part of his life. Since I've been here, I'm a, I'm a slob, but uh, seven women. So who the man? Who the man? Yeah, forget about what I said earlier on. <laughs> this guy's an asshole. It seems like this has been a great conversation piece for him to talk to people. I can slip that into my, my uh, the way I talk to the girls that I'm in wrestling school. And uh, sometimes you'll get a negative reaction out of it and you gotta really turn around the situation. But if you get a fan, if you get somebody that's a fan, you're hooked, dog. You're hooked, you don't need to talk too much. In plain, simple English, Matt is spoiled and has the work ethic of a dead man. He's totally convinced that I'm going out every night and getting laid every night and drinking every night. And it ain't happening. I'll go out maybe three times a week. Maybe four. But you know, for somebody that comes from Chicago that parties every day of his life, that ain't nothing. Three days a week is minimal. Yeah, I don't think my classic's gonna be here for much longer. No, I think I'm ready for another show. If you are going to become a large star in this business, you, in a lot of ways, give up your life. You trade in your normal, everyday life, your normal personality to be in this business. It's an it's a exchange you make because when you become a big star forever from then on, you are going to be, to a large percentage of this world, that person. Um, and, and even to yourself in a lot of ways. It's so true what he's saying here, and you see it all the time now, especially on social media. People don't know how to separate the wrestling character from the real life person, and it always has a detrimental effect. If we can see this from the outset, imagine what it's actually like being a big pro wrestling superstar, trying to tell people over and over again that, hey, I'm not really the person you see on TV. Uh, when your career is over, it's very difficult to walk away from that to change what you've been for years and years and years. Look out! Right in the spine! Oh, this is bad! So thanks to Austin and the Rock! Good night. Good night. I go to the second street, which is Pine Street, and I make a left. Right. Then I go to the traffic light, and I turn right onto Manchester Street. Right. Okay. Okay, did I just miss the damn road now? I can't see shit, Captain. Which road are you looking for? Um, Pine Street. Right. And I that think was I, Willard Street and Perry Street. I think I passed it. <laughs> it kind of reinforces how spoiled we are these days with sat nav and what have you. I wouldn't get into my car without Android Auto set up. Seriously, it gives me anxiety if I don't have it all hooked up. What's your name? It's, it's very difficult to have a normal life outside of our business. Thank you, boss. Thank All right. You. you know, when you go home, you, you tend to not have a lot of friends. You lose contact with a lot of people because you're on the road so much. You know it's late when you're the only one at the airport. disrupting my business and my life and that's bullshit. Haha, <laughs> yes. I realize you're already telling people you are a wrestler. If I hear you tell somebody that, I'm going to make you prove to them in front of them with me that you're not. You understand me? Okay. Because you're not until somebody makes you a wrestler. You're talking bullshit, plain and simple. And I'm tired of hearing bullshit. 
you know, the big chains and, and the roll of money may work with some 17-year-old girl. But I'm not a 17-year-old girl. Now, I went down to your room Thursday night and couldn't find you. Someone let me in to leave you a note, which told you to be here Saturday at 1.30 to talk to me. Ken, I was going home for the But you didn't go home for the weekend. But Saturday was the day I was at the But you didn't go home for the weekend. No, I didn't make it home. No, you sure didn't, and you didn't make it here. Now, you've got a problem, and it ain't just your timing. And we both know that. You want me to open my mouth and tell you what that is? Yes. That's weed. Caught smoking weed? Uh, dear, dear. Thought you mustn't be in the puffing the herb. I've been around the block, son. Two or three times. Been there, done that. So don't tell me I don't know what I'm talking about. It won't happen again. Well, you're right. It won't. It won't ever happen again. If you're not here when you're supposed to be here and not here on time, you and I are going to sever this relationship. At what point in your life drugs were a problem? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, in teenager years, yeah. drugs were real big. Um, cocaine, pot, never heroin. Uh, ecstasy. For a while there, I was getting out of control, and so I went into a rehab. And I went into this rehab in Florida on the beach. Um, if you can't tell, I really haven't had that hard of a life. You know, people go to rehab, and then I go to rehab on the beach. I get back, I get back with the old friends and everything, and I don't listen to what they told me, and, and I fucked up again. And, uh, you know, they were looking for total abstinence, and to be honest with you, I'm not. I'm going to go out once in a while. I've learned that I can go out once in a while and drink a beer or two or three if I wanted to and not have to f turn around and go on like a 10-day coke binge, you know. And that's just for me. I'm not telling anybody in the world to do that. I'm just saying it's for me, you know. I'm 24 years old. There's no f***ing way I'm giving up the bar scene. Not right now. There's no way. Whoa. Okay, right, let me look this guy up. I need to find out what ended up happening to him. Matthew Taglia, uh, oh, oh, oh boy. 250k bail for parolee suspected of attempted store and bank robberies in Loop. This is from the Chicago Tribune. Bail was set at 250k for a man parole last month, accused of trying to rob two businesses and a bank this week in the Loop. My God. Charged with two counts of aggravated robbery, he tried to rob a small retail store in a hotel gift shop. Taglia, I, I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right, but Matthew was identified as the person who entered both businesses and passed a note to an employee demanding money while implying that he was carrying a firearm. But in both incidents, he, <laughs> he left with no money. He's as good at robbing banks as he is at pro wrestling. He was later identified as the person who robbed the bank at South Clark Street. Details on these charges were not available from police. He was on parole for receiving, possessing or selling a stolen vehicle. Matt Classic, you absolute degenerate. Again mate, you should have stuck with that business degree. I got a phone call and it was 6 o'clock. I saw it was James. So I said to myself, well, that have to be bad news because ain't nobody going to be calling you at 6 o'clock in the morning unless it's bad news. He said the show was canceled. He don't call everybody. He don't cancel everything. And there's nothing that I could do about it. Tony said we needed about $500 more to do the show. And I wasn't about to give that boy $500 more to run any show. Hi, brother. Sorry. Right, man, don't worry. God. Chief J. Strongbow. So you have you guys come all the way up here. Chief spent money. He left his family. You could have worked somewhere else. Yep. I could have went to Texas for Mike. Had a personal appearance from me. Yep. Called me on the phone. I said, Mike, I'm booked on the 10th. Right now, today, I could be in Dallas, Texas, making a payday. You know, this is, that's what this business and sport's all about sometimes. You know, you got the show goes on. You just can't cancel it because something's happening. Because you don't like happy somebody. About anything. I mean, we're all here, ball professionals. You know, we pay this, we do this for a living. We don't need to have this canceled out. We need to walk home with our wilds empty. I don't understand it. I got a call from my wife. She 
said, does James called her up and said everything was canceled. You know, I'm sitting in Portland expecting to work tonight. No, I ain't got crap. Sorry, boys. The rest of you, sorry, boys, you didn't get paid. This isn't the first time that wrestlers have not been paid. They kind of understand that process. Oh, uh, what the hell? What a dick. They say a wrestler is self-employed. That's bullshit. When the promoter had all control, he got total control. I'm Shark Boy. My ring name is Athena. And my little slogan thing is, this is what a goddess looks like. It was a uh, piranha that I started out as. The diva. Delicious day fish is licking the competition. <laughs> China and Deborah would like this guy. Yeah, baby. Okay. Anthony McMurphy, the taxi cab driver. The, uh, Billy Gunn is really just a, a, my attitude. It's, it's the cocky, arrogant, think I'm all that. Great athlete. I'm a spoiled little rich brat named Aston Augustus Ambrose Esquire. That explains it. Helena Heavenly. Dollar store demolition. How did you come up with your character? Oh, yeah. Character? Oh, well, that would imply that it's like not real, right? I don't have a character. I'm just myself. I mean, I came to the I came to the arena dressed like this. I uh, kid USA. I'm a kid and I'm from USA, so they put it together. <laughs> oh God, kid USA. I'm a kid from the USA. Looking forward to seeing Man Japan soon or Woman Mozambique. I don't have a character. I'm Amanda Storm. I'm Amanda Storm in real life. And what you see is what you get. Some of the classmates rib me every once in a while. Like Les says, they call me Opie sometimes just because of my uh, young looking appearance. and The baby faced assassin. Just <laughs> there was this idea floated around uh, being this uh, paper boy and coming out to the ring on a bicycle. Oh my god, a paperboy gimmick, absolute money. His entrance music can be the paperboy video game theme, y you know this one? Yeah, okay, maybe not. What can you really say, uh, except the, the, I don't, I don't really feel comfortable with it, but, uh, you know, whatever Les wants to do, you know, I'll do it, because I just want to be out there wrestling. Ugh, poor guy just wants to wrestle and he's happy to take on whatever gimmick the promoter gives him. Can't imagine Paperboy being a big success, if I'm honest. I know uh, one of the nicknames that you ran by me, somebody ran by me, was Rapid Fire. <laughs> I like it, Rapid Fire. Sounds like he just pulled that one out of his ass so he won't have to be a Paperboy. <laughs> a desperation nickname. Yeah, I just thought Rapid Fire was just kind of a catchy nickname so a, a speedy, speedy person right. a person who's who is quick quick and athletic and, yeah and i know is, is something that's been run run by us both is the newspaper boy thing right yeah. oh no what i was wondering if you were up for the idea of possibly a compromise someplace between rapid fire and the newspaper boy <laughs> a very fast paper boy. A paper boy who's really good at his job. He makes his deliveries in under five minutes. Uh, what I'm thinking is rapid delivery. Hey, hey, that's pretty good, actually. Rapid delivery. If you came to the ring and your out, outward attire was more like, uh, I hate to use the name Opie because, <laughs> you know, because we've teased you about, you know, having that look. But, uh, but more along that line, right? Yeah. And maybe with that newspaper bag, but then once you, you took maybe the jeans or the cutoffs or whatever it was off, and you had these sleek, fancy tights, and then the performance spoke for itself. Yeah, I could see something like that. I come out in a hat and still be oiled up, and I just have that sure. bag on me, and as soon as I get to the ring, I just throw that off, and I get right up in that ring, and I'm all business. And yeah, exactly. I mean, you're... Uh, he got completely roped in. He doesn't want to do it. It doesn't matter how you wrestle inside the ropes, my guy. You'll always be known as the paper boy. Rapid delivery, the paper boy. It's kind of like the Superman going to the, uh, the phone booth thing, right? So let's say if the nickname were Rapid Delivery. Have you got any ideas for names? Ricky Fury, Rob Faith, Ronnie Forley... So I'm guessing the first name has to begin with R and the surname has to begin with F. Randy Ferret, uh, Rancid Farts, uh, Robert Fucker, I don't know. Farley, Rory Fargo. Rory kind of has a, a strong, it could sort of have a strong. No, not Rory, that sounds terrible. Uh, sound to it, doesn't it? Roar, yeah. you know, more than, you know, it's not, not too soft. Rapid delivery, Rory Faith. Rapid delivery, Rory. F 
Ferris. Maybe Rory Fox is good. Rory, Rory Fox. I like that better than Ferris, maybe. Rory yeah. Fox. Rory Fox, my God. Rory Fox. What do you think? Yeah, that'll work. The Cedar Rapids, Iowa paper boy. Yeah. James didn't call you. You know he canceled this, right? Does the wrestlers know yet? Did you tell the wrestlers? Yeah. yeah, they all left, went home this morning. <sighs> Did he pay to rent this building? Because I could get some wrestlers here tonight. Because if I could pay for the ring and the building, I, I pay, I do it out of my pocket. The whole total is what? 350 for the building. Because what I got to do, I got to get on the horn and see if I can get enough wrestlers up here to do a show. Now we're going to do some rolling. Well, Don't close the doors yet. Who got a cell phone? Somebody got a cell phone? Yeah. While it is remarkable that Tony's trying to save this show with money out of his own pocket, cell a phone sounds funny, yeah. like hell a phone. These wrestlers. They're okay, buddy. Probably the best thing ever happened to us. See, I hide money for myself sometimes so I don't spend it. That's what I'm looking for, to make sure I ain't got no hidden money here. Oh, that's a bill. Oh, none there. None there. This is for emergency. One, two, three, four. Uh, this is a bit sad, isn't it? Hiding money so he doesn't spend it. Dipping into his emergency fund to try and save this show. Seriously, I hope it sells out, man. This is pretty sad. That's all I got. <laughs> I don't have a bank account, so I can't go to the bank and get nothing. <laughs> so here's two thirty. Okay. So you could go ahead and put the ring up. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, and hopefully we get enough in tonight where you get the rest of your money. No problem. Okay, but there will be a show tonight. Okay. Right here is good. Okay. <laughs> The original promoter's screwing him over. It's absolutely ridiculous. Yes, sir. I just got a phone call. Right. Everything's got to be canceled. Oh. They're calling the commissioner right now of wrestling. They're doing what? They're calling the, uh, the commissioner of wrestling up now because everything's got to be canceled. I got wrestlers on the way up here, too. God darn it. James called the commission and told the commissioner to, to cancel everything, so it looked like it won't be a show. So I just... I tell guys on the phone to... Oh, gee. Do you have any idea what you want? Yeah, actually, I have a idea here. Okay. Something with red and yellow, maybe some stars down the side here and just have a uh, rapid delivery on the back. Okay. The making of rapid delivery Rory Fox. A star is born, ladies and gents. That's just a little bit of an arch. You like it arched? Okay. To get you more in the mood now? Oh, yeah. Uh, Just need my wrestling boots. Okay. Oh. Hello? Yes, sir. What I'm trying to do is see if I can get licensed just to do the show for the night. If you can help me out in any kind of way, it'd be appreciated. Because I... Okay, sir. As you're coming down, there'll be a Dunkin' Donuts on your left-hand okay. side that's being repaired, okay, remodeled. You can't miss it. Bye-bye. 
The commissioner is on his way. Okay, yeah. thank you. Too what much. is Joey Gamache number? Joey Gamache. His father is a promoter. Yeah, he is. Hey, Marsha, could you look up a number on the Joey Gamache? Uh, this is pretty interesting, isn't it? Atlas is doing absolutely everything he can to save this show from trying to get a license to trying to bring in a temporary promoter. I mean, fair play. Dead in, dead in. We got to sit down and talk. Okay. Promoter, no promoter's license. They couldn't grant a temporary one or anything? Yeah. No. No. No show? No, no. No. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> It was his first time. He was really looking forward to it. He was looking forward to seeing Tony and the rest of Russell. We have something next month. Okay. Okay, guys, I'm gonna take off now, y'all. I'm sorry. You've been wonderful. Yeah. And I want to bring back some honesty to this business. Hi. Come on, give you a picture, baby. I know that's probably something that may never happen, but I'm going to at least put my piece into this puzzle. Hey, Alice, it's quarter of seven. The uh, commissioners are on their way. They're going to shut your ass down. And I want to tell you something. When it's all said and done, I'm going to like you lower than whale sh And if you want to... I just want to bring back some civility to this business. What a piece of work. That's made me angry. I don't know enough about this guy to make a fair judgement, but by just watching him conduct himself in this documentary, he comes across like a stereotypical bastard indie promoter who doesn't care about talent nor the fans he's letting down. What else could happen to O'Atlas tonight, huh? You better have a very... Here we go, we're gonna see the paper boy. Away. I've been waiting for this my whole life and it's just about here. The other main event is uh, myself and The Rock in what is called a fully loaded strap match. Um, we're going to be connected by the wrist by a, about a 10 foot piece of leather strap. When the decision came down with the EWA to uh, eliminate me, Right then and there, I said, well, Tony, you're going to have to think of something real fast. You're not getting no younger. You have to do something to get your name out there. Is Sandy in here? Sandy. Are you decent? So what we're going to do tonight, you just throw them punches. You know, you do your kick and all the other stuff. Legitimate. Yeah, right. legitimate punches. You know, you just nail the hell out of it. Don't worry about how hard it is. Damn it, from trying to save a wrestling show to performing in a work shoot match. Kind of feel bad for Tony Atlas right now. This is the hardest part about doing a shoot match. Just the idea of getting punched in the face. You know, it's kind of make you think. I've been thinking about this for three days now, you know, trying to get my head mentally ready for it, you know. I can tell you to relax and you're not going to, so <laughs> I'm just spinning my wheels. But the point is, be sure to listen, okay? Be sure to listen. And if you don't hear him, tell him you don't hear him. You know, I'm obviously going to get on the mic, you make fun of you at your first match, blah, 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 and then lock up with you. We do something, blah, blah, blah. Say so, yeah, I come in, I hit you or whatever, and I go back to him, I hit him, and like a couple drop kicks. Just relax, man, and have fun. I mean, that's what it's all about, right? Yeah. Shut up, Stevie Guerrero. Yeah. He makes me look bad. I'm going to something to beat the hell out of him. It's time to forget everything we talked about and just beat the hell out of him. It doesn't matter if the outcome is predetermined. What matters is we go out there and entertain them better than anybody else on this planet. Where you want to be, just to be in this deal is big enough. To be on top of this deal is unbelievable. And that's where I'm headed.
<laughs> he's actually doing it. There he is, Paperboy. Let's cue up his theme music. The poor guy's probably nervous as hell and he's got a gimmick he absolutely hates. Grim, absolutely grim. Now I do keep in mind that Tony has a he has interest in kinks. Let's say I wouldn't be surprised if he's actually enjoying this a whole lot. Look it up if you really need to. But yeah, I think this makes a bit more sense when you understand Tony's uh, his uh, his endeavors away from the ring. Just look it up. That's all I'm saying. Does Tony get a chance to punch her in the face? I mean, you'd like to think so, right? The structure of these rules, so that we do have a winner by pinfall. No flukes in this one. No disqualification, no excuses. Oh no, look out! Oh. And Helmsley just hung out to dry there, and The Rock with another right hand, and down goes Triple H. Who will meet the WWF Champion at SummerSlam? Go ahead, rapid delivery, Rory Fox. I smell a future world champion right here. Number two. Go on through life, right? Yes. Like you always say. <laughs> good, good. I got another ice pack in it. You need it, man. Again. Damn it. Ooh, broken knuckles. Looks like her face was in good shape, though, so I'm guessing Tony didn't lay a finger on her. I don't know about you. That was very good. Very good. Uh, it feel kind of numb right now. Sad thing about it, this ain't gonna be the last one we do. It's just the beginning. We got to take it all the way up to the East Coast. The kids, they really supported me. Came around and slapped hands. I thought maybe they might be hesitant to do that because of this whole paper boy thing. But the crowd really, the crowd really took to it, and I was really surprised. Hey, that's not terrible. As long as he's learning something from all these losses, he definitely won't get booked as a jobber paperboy for much longer. Oh, here we go. We're going to hear all about how Mac Classic's planning on robbing a bank. When I got to Cincinnati, it was a lot harder than I thought it would be. You know, I went in there the first day wanting to be, you know, God in wrestling. 
and I found out it's really hard. It ain't easy. Humbled. The rich kid has been humbled. Uh, you know, you kind of feel alone at certain times, like when you're frustrated and, and, and get scared and you're in a different place. And drugs are just an old friend, you know? It's like having your best friend back. I don't have any complaints. You know, I've seen a lot of bad, I've seen a lot of good. Even with this terrible video quality, that chicken still looks pretty good. You know, I just thank God that I got the opportunity to be Tony Atlas. Most people don't get a chance to live their fantasies. I was able to live, man. Oh yeah. is um, do what I have to do to become a professional wrestler. Why do you want to still do that after all that? Because it's still in my heart. I still feel it here and I want to try it. It's not going to happen. <laughs> I can see into the future. It's not going to happen. I think a dream is worth everything. You know, even if you try to succeed in your dream and not make it, I think it's still worth everything. I think that you have an innate feeling inside of you that you know that you were meant to do this. If you got the dream, I mean, once it's in you, it's, it's, it's hard to say no. And anybody out there that's trying to do it, it's damn sweet when you get there, so keep trying. Ready? Ready, let's go. You know what, I thought this was pretty good. I was expecting an MTV fluff piece or something tailored towards younger, more casual viewers, but this show definitely has value for more seasoned pro wrestling fans too. I thought the Tony Atlas stuff was definitely the most interesting and seeing Hunter in China on the road was also pretty insightful. So yeah, good job MTV. It's also refreshing seeing a documentary styled show from the Attitude Era that doesn't point the finger and blame pro wrestling for the downfall of society, so yeah, I had fun watching this one and I hope you guys enjoyed it too. Bit of a longer video this time around so thank you for watching until the end and hopefully I'll see you all again next time. Take care everyone.